On a normal summer day, Sheriff Roscoe was out for his daily trip around the town, checking up on everybody, when a call came over the radio. We've had a suspicious call come over the radio from a neighbor of Jacob Barnes. They asked if you could respond to his house. I'm on my way. Five minutes later at Jacob's house, Roscoe began walking to the front door when he realized that the door was cracked open. He immediately searched the home. Nobody was there besides Jacob Barnes laying outside behind the shed, deceased. Backup along with the coroner arrived to the scene of the incident and they began to investigate the crime scene. Based on the body temperature, he died between six to eight hours ago and we've identified him as Mr. Jacob Barnes. Cause of death head trauma? Yes, there was blood force trauma to the back of the head. It was two days after the murder of Jacob. The whole town seemed to keep their distance from one another. No one trusted each other. Everyone was so confused and puzzled by the death of Jacob. It was a town where everyone believed they could trust each other. Now everything has changed. I believe I found some sort of evidence. Do you want me to call for backup? Yes, this seems to be important. I don't know how we didn't find this out from our primary sweep of the crime scene, but I found a broken glass behind the couch and the lab results came back to a fingerprint matching Eddie Frank. As soon as the sheriff arrived to Eddie's house, he immediately rushed into the house. He kicked the door open. Inside, Eddie stood in front of a bat covered in blood. Get down on your hands and knees. You're under arrest for the murder of Jacob. No, I didn't do it. I'm being framed. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Roscoe took Eddie down to the police station. Eddie, don't say anything. We're getting you a lawyer to get you out of this. Later in the interrogation room. Eddie, I have a question for you. I want to talk to my lawyer. We have found evidence proving you were at the crime scene. I'm not saying anything without my lawyer. Sheriff Roscoe walked out of the room frustrated. He couldn't continue to question Eddie until his lawyer arrived. Hello, I'm Mrs. Solano. I'm here to represent Mr. Franks. He's in the interrogation room to the right. Mr. Solano began discussing the situation with his client to figure out how they were going to prove that he was innocent and that he was potentially being framed. But first, they had to figure out who in the small town would have enough motive to try and frame Eddie. So start from the beginning. Where were you the day of the murder? I was home alone all day because I had pulled an all-nighter at work before. So did you see your girlfriend, Miss Teddy Johnson, at all throughout the day? No. I saw her before work, but I didn't see her the day after. Well, that's interesting. Based on the reports from all the initial interviews with everybody in the town, she claims you two were together the entire day. Suspicious. That's a little sus. What? No. I didn't see her at all that day. I'm going to go inform the sheriff on this. Mr. Solano walked out of the interrogation room and walked straight to the sheriff at his desk. He whispered in his ear the information that Eddie had just told him. The sheriff then walked over to Teddy, who was still sitting in the office, waiting on Eddie to be bailed out. Hey Johnson, you're under arrest. We have reason to believe that your initial statement was not accurate. Eddie has just made a statement claiming that he was alone the entire day of the murder and did not see you until the weekend was over. So would you like to explain to me where you were that day because your original statement has been disproved. What? I don't understand. I was with him the entire day. We were working on the garden basically the whole day until he had to go to work. May 15th. Oh, I was with my sister Jessica that day. We had some family things going on since her boyfriend had just recently broke up with her. Who is her boyfriend and where can we find your sister? We are going to have to confirm your story with her. Her ex was Jacob Barnes. I have not seen her since that day. I figured she was grieving in her own way and that I should probably leave her alone for the time being. I will have one of my deputies go get her and bring her in to confirm your story. Roscoe went to Jessica's house only to realize that it appeared she had not been there in a couple of days. They came to the conclusion that Jessica was officially missing right after the murder of her ex-boyfriend. I think we have reason to believe that Jessica is a suspect. 
having recently been broken up with, then disappearing right after the murder of her ex, -boy ex gives her a good motive and reason. Roscoe and his entire department began doing everything they could to find Jessica. After three days of the town being on high alert trying to find her, dispatchers received a call that a body had been found in the field behind Jessica's house. It was Jessica. Roscoe went back to the station where he confronted Teddy. Teddy, I'm going to be honest. It's not looking good for you. With your only alibi dead, you are our only lead. Well, with both of them being murdered, it is obviously somebody who has something against the both of them. Yes, and at the moment, you are the only person that has a connection to both of them that we can find. We are going to continue the investigation because we need to get this one right. The sheriff was trying to find security cameras that might have been outside of Eddie's house since both of the crime scenes did not have any cameras close enough to identify any body. So Roscoe went to the house right across the street from Eddie's house to ask them if they had security cameras. Hello, ma'am. I'm the sheriff. Wait, Miss Smith? Hello, Sheriff. How can I help you today? Coroner, I didn't know you lived here. I only recently moved in after the family moved out. Makes sense. But anyways, I'm here on the Jacob Barnes investigation. We have now connected the Jessica Johnson murder with this one, and I was wondering if you happen to have any of your security cameras facing the house across the street. Absolutely. The one on my front door has Eddie's in the background. Come in and I can show you whatever you need. Roscoe led Mrs. Smith into her house where she led him to the computer that she has her security system connected to. Could you pull up the footage from two days after the first murder? We'll probably need to watch before noon because I arrived around three and it appeared as if Eddie was just getting home. Yes. Here you go, Sheriff. The Sheriff began watching the footage to see if anybody walked into the house that was not Eddie. Not to his surprise, Teddy appeared on camera. It was obvious that she was trying to make sure she wasn't being watched. She snuck up to the front door and used her key to get into her boyfriend's house with what appeared to be the murder weapon in hand. That is all the evidence I need to arrest her for good. She had the murder weapon and tried to frame her own boyfriend to get away with killing her own sister and sister's ex-boyfriend. Roscoe took a copy of the footage and went back to the sheriff's department where he would officially inform Teddy of her arrest. Teddy, you are under arrest for the murder of Jacob Barnes and your sister Jessica Johnson. Yeah. What? No, sheriff, you got this all wrong. We have you on camera with the murder weapon breaking into Eddie Frank's house. We know you're attempting to frame him. There is enough evidence here to put you away for good. No, Sheriff, you don't understand. He was a danger to my sister. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. Then how was it supposed to happen? I went over to Jacob's house that day to make sure he would leave my sister alone for good. Then he tried to tell me that they were back together and that they're going to be getting married soon. I don't know what got into me. I just grabbed the bat next to me and started hitting him. I realized too late what I had just done. That's when I immediately ran to my sister. I was panicking and didn't know what to do. I told her what happened and I asked her if she would take care of the bat for me. She got mad at me and threatened to turn me in because she knew I couldn't get away with killing her fiance. I don't remember much that happened after that until I was standing over my sister and she wasn't breathing. So I ran to Eddie's and he wasn't home. I left the bat there and ran because I didn't know where to go. Well, that is a confession. I'll file this away immediately. The trial was the next week. They found Teddy guilty of both murders and she was sentenced to 40 years to life. And after over a week, the town was finally at peace again.